BTEC Applied Science Unit 5 uh, Physics. This is the last video for the thermal physics. Uh, I'm going to do another bunch of videos for materials. Uh, I'm going to start on that <clears throat> next. Uh, and then that's C2. And then C3 is about fluids, a bit of fluid mechanics. So something to look forward to. I'm going to do all of the physics for Unit 5. Uh, and this video is about heating and cooling a substance, about the energy changes uh, when something is warmed up or cools down. Now, liquid to solid, this lava solidifying, uh, it's a change of state. There are three states of matter that you need to know, solid, liquid, gas. And if a substance changed from one state to another, that's a change of state. So solidifying gas to liquid is condensation. Uh, solid to liquid is melting. That's pretty technical stuff, this. Uh, liquid to gas is evaporation or vaporization. Okay, and these are changes of state. Now, in some of them, energy is absorbed. In some of them, energy is emitted. And that's what we're gonna talk about now. You should recognize this graph uh, in unit two. Do you remember your, your stearic acid? Okay, changing from a liquid to a solid. Well, we've got the whole graph here. We start with a gas. Number one is a gas cooling down. And the gas is losing heat energy to its surroundings. This is temperature against time. So it's cooling down, it's losing heat energy. Number two, uh, the gas is condensing, number two, there you go, number two. The gas is condensing into a liquid. Uh, notice that when this happens, the temperature stays the same. So the temperature at which this particular uh, gas changes to a liquid or liquid changes to a gas is the boiling point. Yeah, the temperature stays the same. In the case of water, that's 100 degrees centigrade. Now, as it's condensing it is losing energy but the temperature stays the same and what's happening is that the the molecules are forming bonds and as they form bonds becoming a liquid energy is released okay bonds are forming as the gas particles come together uh, number three is the liquid cooling down so the liquid loses heat energy to its surroundings and it gets colder uh, and the, the water molecules, the liquid molecules are losing kinetic energy. They are slowing down and we are losing heat energy to the surroundings. Number three is a liquid cooling down. Until we get to this temperature here, which is the melting point. And number four, the liquid freezes into a solid. So again, in the case of water, that would be zero degrees centigrade. Okay, the liquid freezes into a solid and more bonds are formed. In fact, lots and lots of bonds are formed so the particles aren't free to travel around to change positions at all. Uh, and important again, as it's changing into a solid, the temperature stays the same. It's still losing energy, but the temperature stays the same. When we get to all of it being solid, then the solid cools down uh, and then the solid is just losing heat energy to its surroundings uh, until it gets to the same temperature as its surroundings and then it will reach thermal equilibrium. And when it's in thermal equilibrium with its surroundings, there will be no net gain or loss of heat. OK, no net gain or loss. That, that basically means that the solid, let's say you've got something at 20 degrees centigrade at room temperature, it, it will lose heat energy, but it's also gaining heat energy. It's not overall, it's not gaining or losing. It's in thermal equilibrium. There is no net gain or loss of heat. That was a substance cooling down, a substance warming up. It's just the other way round. Okay, so solid warming up, 
and then the solid melts at the melting point the temperature stays the same then the liquid warming up and then the liquid evaporates yeah and the temperature stays the same and then when it's all gas then a gas warming up heating up okay notice that when a change of state is taking place which is there and there then delta t equals zero the temperature does not change now when a substance is changing state the heat which is either given off or absorbed is called latent heat in the case of a solid a solid changing to a liquid or a liquid changing to a solid uh, that's called latent heat of fusion in the case of a liquid changing into a gas or a gas changing into a liquid that's called latent heat of vaporization so uh, what substances are involved what change of state is taking place it is is it absorbing heat energy is it emitting heat energy it's called latent heat and we calculate it using this equation delta q equals m l okay where m is the mass in kilograms okay there's no temperature involved because it happens at a constant temperature so delta q equals m times l where l is called the latent heat of either fusion or evaporation okay here's a couple of examples to look at uh, the latent heat of vaporization of water is 2.26 times 10 to the 6 joules per kilogram. You'd be given that in the test. Uh, how much energy would be needed to vaporize 400 kilograms, I beg your pardon, of water at 100 degrees centigrade? In other words, if you have 400 grams of water boiling, uh, how much energy is needed to evaporate it? Uh, and so uh, I'll let you have a go at that have a go at the second one as well how much energy is released when two kilograms of steam at 100 degrees centigrade condenses okay so here's the answers delta Q equals M times L uh, M uh, for the first one in kilograms is 0 0.4 and we just multiply that by the latent heat of vaporization and we get 904 kilojoules on the second one delta Q is ml uh, so that's two kilograms two times 2.26 times 10 to the 6 uh, 4.54 megajoules times 10 to the 6 joules okay here's a couple of examples uh, the first one is uh, melting ice so we're talking latent heat of fusion here uh, and the second one is uh, freezing water okay so again latent heat of fusion uh, if you want to pause the video and have a go at these I'll show you the answers in three two one okay so again it's to do with the change of state uh, delta Q equals ml and remember the mass has to be in kilograms so 0 0.5 times whatever is 167 kilojoules uh, 2.8 times thingy is 935 kilojoules so for a change of state at a constant temperature delta Q equals ml now if a change of state isn't involved and we're just basically it's warming up or it's cooling down without changing state then we use this equation which is delta Q equals M C delta T because now a change of temperature is involved so delta T M C delta T uh, I think he, he works at our local disco actually M C delta T anyway uh, m is the mass in kilograms c is called the specific heat capacity of the substance it's actually the heat capacity per kilogram it's how much heat the substance needs to warm up per kilogram mc delta t delta t is the change in temperature so again this equation is for when there isn't a change of state involved 
This is just heating something up or it cooling down, how much heat energy it gains or loses. Uh, here's a couple of examples. The specific heat capacity of water, 4,200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Uh, how much energy is needed to raise the temperature of 0.8 kilograms of water from 20 to 100? Uh, and then the next one, how much energy does 400 grams of water at 75 degrees centigrade release to its surroundings when it cools down to 25? Well, have a go at them. The answers are in three, two, one. Okay, Q equals MC delta T, so M 0.8 times 4,200 times 80, because that's the difference in temperature, is 269 kilojoules. Uh, and then the last one, very similar, um, is 0.4, because it's 400 grams, and the temperature difference is 50, 84 kilojoules.